Good morning. Today we will see an important object oriented programming concept that is inheritance. You might have seen the other object oriented programming concepts like uh, what is a class, what is an object, what is polymorphism, data binding, dynamic binding, data abstraction and so on. And uh, today we will see what is inheritance and also the, the first simplest inheritance that is single inheritance. As I already stated, inheritance is an important object oriented programming concept. So before going to the details of what is this inheritance, first we will see what is the meaning of the term inherit or what does inherit means. So inherit is a term that we often see or often use in our day to day life. That is uh, we might uh, say if we see a tall boy we might say he has inherited his quality from his father or if, or if he is having say brown hair then he might have inherited his quality from his mother. So inheritance is nothing but deriving or getting something from ancestors or getting something from your parents. So the dictionary meaning also states it is receiving or deriving quality from your parents or your ancestors. And also inheritance, we also talk about inherited diseases. In certain cases, um, for example, asthma. Uh, asthma, if uh, parents are supposed to have, then we might say the child also is uh, likely to have that particular disease. So inheritance in such ways we normally use in our day-to-day -day life. Now we'll see what is, uh, see in this slide we have given an example of a son who is a, who is a tall boy with brown eyes and uh, he has actually inherited his height from the father and also the quality of brown eyes from his mother. <coughs> So that is an example for a real life scenario. Now we will see what is inheritance in object oriented programming. So in uh, uh, object oriented programming, inheritance means the same. It is the same in the sense you, uh, in order to know that concept more clearly, first we should know what is a class. And here we, I am going to define a class a student. So class as you know it is an any um, any uh, it is a data type it is a user defined data type and uh, here this particular student class let us take it has got two attributes register number and name these are two characteristics of this class student register number and name and also it has got let us take an example it has got two functions read function and also it has got display function so you have defined a class student with these attributes and also with these functions. Now imagine a case where you need another class, say for example engineering or medical class and that class also needs all these attributes or functions. That class also needs register number, name, read and display functions. Now uh, normally if, if there is no relationship between the student and the newly created class, then we will have to create the engineering class like uh, class engineering again with the same set of attributes register number name read display and also the additional attributes and the additional functions what is meant by this additional attributes and additional functions it is nothing but the additional the the characteristics that are pertaining to engineering alone or the functions pertaining to engineering alone as we have seen in the um, uh, previous example previous day to day life example that particular boy will have the characteristics inherited from his parents not only that he might have got his own characteristics likewise when you define a class that uh, this engineering class should need to have all the characteristics of student and in addition it needs to have its own characteristics that is what is meant by this additional functions and uh, attributes now if you want to uh, define this engineering class, there is no need to define the register number, name, read and display, all these things again in the engineering class because this part is already defined and it is kept as student class. So what we need to do is, we need to just inherit the student class to the engineering class so that all the attributes and functions of the student class can be used by the engineering class. So that is what is actually meant by inheritance. See in the slide it is explained in the class student, the class student having two attributes register number and name and uh, the engineering class is having um, uh, register number and name which is already defined in the student and also uh, it has got additional attributes like branch, semester and university. Uh, see, uh, in, order, uh, in order to define this engineering class, we need not uh, again define register, num register number, name, read and display again in the engineering class. Rather, what we need to do is just to inherit the characteristics of student 
to engineering. And now we will see some of the terminologies associated with inheritance. So, here in the previous example, we have seen two classes, the student class, the student class and the engineering class, the student class and the engineering class. So, the student class has got two attributes and all these attributes or functions are inherited by the engineering class. So, this class, the, the class from which you inherit uh, or the class from which a new class inherits the properties or attributes that is called the base class. It can also be called as the parent class and the newly created class, the class that inherits the properties from the student that is called the derived, you have derived a class that is called the derived class or it can be called as the child class. So, the, the base class or the parent class and this is the child class or the derived class. So, this is the actual representation. This means a student is a class that is already defined and then engineering is a new class that is derived from student or engineering is inheriting the characteristics from student. So, the student is a base or the parent class and engineering is the derived of the child class. And now, we can formalize this inheritance. What is this inheritance? There should be a formal definition for this inheritance. So, inheritance can be defined as it is a mechanism of deriving a new class from an existing class. This class should be already existing and if you are deriving a new class from an already existing class, then that is what is meant by inheritance. Now, uh, there are a few more definitions that can be given for this inheritance. That is, actually, this stu student is an already defined class student is an already defined class and you are going to extend the student here. How do you extend? You are extending by adding some more attributes to the already existing student class. So, in other words, you can say inheritance is extending classes. You are adding attributes to an already existing class and you are extending that class. That is also one form of inheritance or one definition for inheritance. And another definition you can say the what, what, why do you need actually to inherit? Why, do, why do not we write all the characteristics here again? So, the principle why you are going for inheritance is in order to make a class reusable. So, reusability, reusability is an important object oriented programming concept. That is um, normally when we write software modules, we say we should write program modules or modules should be written in such a manner that should be reusable. So, that anyone who needs that particular function should be able to access or should be able to use that particular module. So, Reusability is an important concept and here in object oriented programming in OOPS, uh, this reusability is achieved through inheritance. You are reusing that, you are reusing the student class in engineering. The student class which is already defined is being reused in engineering. So, there can be another definition that, pay, that can be given for inheritance. And now, now we will see the different uh, uh, types of inheritance or different the classification for inheritance. How do you classify inheritance? What are the different types of inheritance? Inheritance can be classified to see it is based upon how many base classes and how many derived classes are used. Based on that the number of base classes and number of derived classes used you can uh, classify inheritance to five different classes. The first one is single inheritance. As the name suggests, it, there, there will be only a single base class and a single derived class. Say uh, you write the base class as B and you have only a single derived class that is D. If you have a single base class and uh, a single derived class, then that is single inheritance. As in the previous example, we had written uh, the base class as student and the derived class as engineering. So, that was an example for single inheritance. The second type of inheritance is multiple inheritance, multiple inheritance. In multiple inheritance what we have is you will have multiple base classes, multiple base classes in the sense you have a base class, you have another base class, multiple base classes more than one base classes and a single child. So, coming uh, going back to our uh, real life uh, example, 
uh, this particular boy, if this is a boy, this father and mother, this boy has inherited his qualities not only from the father, he has inherited his qualities from the mother also. So, there is uh, a child or a derived class inheriting characteristics from more than one, one base class. There is an example for multiple inheritance. Then the third type. The third type is multi-level inheritance, multi-level. So as the name suggests, it is inheritance on different levels, like a father might have got the characteristics from the grandfather and the father has uh, given the characteristics to the child. So a grandfather will be there, grandfather's characteristics given to father and uh, the father might have given his characteristics to the son. So the inheritance going to different levels that is multi-level inheritance. And the next one, the fourth one is hierarchical inheritance. Hierarchical inheritance. In hierarchical, hier hierarchical in the, in, in the inheritance, there will be one base class and multiple base classes, uh, multiple, de sorry, multiple derived classes. So this means if a father is there, he can give his or uh, he can uh, give his characteristics or uh, to not only one child can, can give his characteristics to more than one, uh, if he has got more than one children, then he can uh, give characteristics to more than one children. So two, both these uh, uh, children, they are getting characteristics from their father. So, a single base class with multiple derived classes, both this B and C are getting qualities from the parent class. So, that is an example for, um, that is what is meant by hierarchical inheritance. And the last one is hybrid inheritance, hybrid inheritance, which is hybrid inheritance as the name suggests it is a combination hybrid it is a co combination of any of the above it can be a combination of single and multiple it can be combination of uh, multi-level and hierarchical uh, like a combination of any of uh, two or more inheritance that is called a hybrid inheritance and as an example in a hybrid inheritance there is no clear cut rule as to how you have to draw you can uh, have a combination of any of two inheritances and can draw so this is an example for hybrid inheritance. This is an example for hybrid inheritance where there is a, a grandparent, two children and a derived class from these B and C. So here when we see this particular diagram, we can see that it, it is going to different levels. So multi-level is there from A to B, B to D. So multi-level is there. Then come, taking this part alone, then there will be hierarchical. That is uh, a single base class with two children. If you are considering the second part alone, that is multiple base classes with a single child, that is uh, multiple inheritance. Or uh, So it is a combination of uh, different types of inheritance. So that is an example for hybrid inheritance. So these are the different types of inheritance. And uh, in today's class, we will be seeing just the first uh, inheritance alone, that is single inheritance single inheritance so single inheritance as already mentioned it is a single base class with a single derived class so there should be a form so you, you know how to define the class a class a can be defined with attributes with attributes and functions. Class A will be uh, already, it is an already defined class, it has got attributes and also it has got functions. Now we have to define the class B. So class B, if you want to define class B, how, what should be the format? How can you define? First we have to define class A, then followed by class B definition and the format for uh, defining the derived class is shown in the slide that is class followed by the derived class name. Here you have the derived class as this is a B is a derived class, so derived class name, then followed by colon. Then you have to write the visibility mode, visibility mode followed by the base class name. So here for the time being, I am just writing visibility mode, visibility mode and then followed by the base class name. What is the base class name? Base class name is A. So class B colon visibility mode followed by A. A is already defined class. Now we will see what is this visibility mode. 
visibility mode is visibility mode is uh, how the members of the base class will be inherited by the derived class how the um, so in order to know that concept more clearly first we'll see what is uh, how many members are there in the base class and how many are there in the derived class okay we'll see what is a visibility mode visibility mode so visibility mode can be you can give two values for visibility mode it can either be private or it can be public so what is actually visibility mode is how you are going to take the data members and member functions of the base class in the derived class how what what, more, what is the mode of inheritance how you are going how you are going to inherit the data members and member functions whether it is in a private manner or in a public manner so visibility mode can have only two values it can be either private or public so in order to know that uh, concept more clearly we will give an example say there is a class next next uh, there is a class say b and it has got private data and also it has got public data so in the private part let us take there is a data member a and in the public part in the public section it has a data member b followed by functions get a get a b and show a so this th this is the base class which has one private data member and uh, four uh, one data member in the public section followed by four member functions in the public section so that is the base class now you are going to uh, we are going to discuss how you are going to inherit the data members and the member functions in the derived class so what happens if you are inheriting in a private manner what happens if you are inheriting in a public manner so that is what visibility mode says now you have say another class so this is a concept b to d so you have another class say class d class d and this class d is having class d is having in the private part it is having c and in the public section in the public section it is having uh, mul and display mul function and display function so this is a class d so class d has got only one data member c and has got two functions mul and display in the public section and class b has got one data member in the private section followed by four members in the public section now if you are going to inherit uh, b to d what happens in d d will have as you know d will have all the characteristics of it of d itself that is it will have c it will have mul and display that is clear then what all characteristics of b will be inherited to d so the one important point to be kept in mind is private data members and private member functions data members and member functions will not be inherited at any in any circumstance so here we have one private data member a which will not be inherited at all so uh, this class d will not be able to access a so this is ruled out now what about the public part so in the public section what all you have is you have b get a get a b and show a those four four functions are uh, uh, three functions and a data member are there in the base class now what happens if you are going to inherit in a public manner that is the visibility mode if it is stated as public what happens so this private data cannot be inherited then this public data you are inheriting this b in a public b is um, uh, b is a data member that is declared in the public section of the base class and you are inheriting this uh, b again in a public manner so in the derived class d there will be private section and there will be public section so in the in the uh, this b since it is a public data member of the base class and you are inheriting in a public manner this comes in the public section of the derived class d 
followed by this get a, get a, b, show a. All these are public functions and you are incorrecting in a public manner. So, all those will be get a, get a, b and show a, show a. All these functions will be there in the public section of the derived class. Now, what about uh, uh, class D's its own characteristics? It has got a private data member C. So, the private data member C which is already defined in the derived class will be there in the derived class and followed by the two uh, public functions um, uh, defined in the derived class that will be there in the derived class. So, this will be the result. This will be the result that is after inheritance class D will have this set of data members and member functions in the private section and the public section. In the private section we will have C that it is not inherited it is its own and uh, also uh, in the public section we will get B because B is was there in the public section of the base class. So, B was inherited in a public mode. So, you will get in the public section followed by all the data all the member functions of the base class and its own data uh, member functions. So, that is a visibility mode public means. So, here uh, in the slide also it is clearly mentioned if the visibility mode is public you have the base class you have the derived class what will be the visibility or what will be the public and how many members will be private and how many members will be public. How many members will be private and how many will be public in the derived class. So, that is shown in the slide clearly. Then we will see the next visibility that is private. Private. Again the same is the case. You have the class B in the private section and follow, uh, followed by private section and public section and class D is also here. Now, what happens is you are going to inherit the qualities or you, uh, this class D is going to inherit the characteristics of B in a private manner. So, as already mentioned as the golden rule says the private data members and member functions cannot be inherited. So, again this is ruled out. What about the public uh, data members and member functions of the base class? How you are going to inherit? You are in going to inherit in a private manner. So, if you are going to inherit in a private manner then what happens is uh, this all these things in the public section of the base class will move on to the private section of the derived class. So, here all these things will be so all these things that is uh, B get A get A get A B and show A all these things they are there in the public section of the base class. But since you are incorrecting in a private manner they will move on to the private section they will move on to the private section of the derived class. So, here you can say in the private section we will have C not only C it will also have B get A get A B and show A and only these two functions only these two functions that is model and display will be there in the public section of the derived class and this is why uh, this is what is called private mode of uh, inheritance in if the visibility mode is given as private this is what actually happens. So, that is uh, shown in this slide there in private inheritance. Uh, you have the base class uh, again the derived class and you have two data members in the uh, uh, base class and uh, one data member in the derived class and this is how this uh, inheritance that is uh, the rule says private members of a base class cannot be inherited the private uh, member uh, the public members of a uh, of a class can be inherited and this public members can be inherited by two ways it can be done either in a private manner or in a public manner and if you are inheriting in a private manner all the public members whether it is data member or member function that will be that will come if you are inheriting in a public manner that will come in the public section and if you are inheriting in a private manner that goes to the private section of the derived class. So, moving on to the next topic. What is meant by? So, here uh, we have seen. So, uh, in a class you might have understood in a class there can be private and public section. In a class there can be private section and public section. So, in private section they can be data members and also they can be member functions. Similarly, in public section also they can be data members and they can be member functions. Now, and this is uh, this is a uh, 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 skeleton of a class you can say. So, this data member and member functions this in the private section of a class 
is not accessible is not accessible to the derived classes or the derived class cannot access the data members and member functions of the uh, uh, of the uh, what is it base class so here now you are going to introduce a new visibility mode here in addition to this private and public there is one more visibility mode that we are going to introduce here and first we will see what is the need for that particular uh, visibility mode now imagine a situation where you have uh, a class say base class and base class has got a1 and a2 are the two attributes and they are private and it has got some uh, uh, say uh, it has got a3 and a4 that is public and also it has got say uh, two functions f1 and f2 that is also public and you are going to derive a class from this and this uh, class d also has got uh, some characteristics like uh, it has got in the private section in the private section it has got d1 and d2 and it has got in the public section is it has got say some two functions f3 and f4. Now as the, the golden rule states this private data um, uh, cannot be inherited by the derived class. So this that means a1 and a2 cannot be inherited by the derived class. Now what happens is see imagine a situation where you need the attributes a1 and a2 in d but what happens here is since they are private they cannot be inherited so d cannot access a1 and a2 so what what solution do we think normally is why don't we make this private data public so they can be accessed by all but here you have a concept called data hiding uh, which is also an important object on the programming concept so in data hiding what 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 is shown what is states is uh, data should be hidden should not be accessible to all functions or should not be accessible to all uh, classes. So data hiding concept in order to preserve this data hiding concept of object oriented programming uh, what we have to do we cannot make this private data public if it is made public or uh, everybody can access this a1 and a2. So for that we are going to introduce a new visibility mode that is called protected. So protected is a visibility mode that serves a limited purpose of inheritance. So if you are making this changing this private data to protected, you are going to change this private data to protected, then this a1 and a2, this a1 and a2 can be accessed not only by the functions f1 and f2 because f1 and f2 are two functions defined within the same class not only by those functions it can also be accessed by f3 and f4 since d is an immediate derived class of b that means a protected data member can be accessed by the functions defined within the same class and also it can be uh, accessed by the functions defined in the class that is an immediate derived class so this um, class d can access a1 and a2 since class d is an immediate class D is an immediate uh, uh, derived class of the class B. So that is what is meant by protected. So now we have seen three visibility modes not only private and public we have one more that is protected. Protected. So in the protected part also you can write data members and member functions. So here in a class you can have three uh, in a class we can have private section public section and protected section this uh, private data the private section the data or the functions in the private section cannot be accessed by anyone um, can be accessed only by the functions of within de defined within the same class this public data and functions can be accessed from anywhere and the protected data and functions can be accessed from within the same class and also from the immediate derived classes so that is what is meant by protected visibility so uh, in order to understand more about this how the uh, visibility changes in the derived class if you are going for private inheritance and public inheritance that is the next important section. So as already mentioned you have two derivations you can have you can either inherit in a private manner that is a visibility mode can be either private or it can be public. We are going to draw a table showing the base class vis visibility uh, and uh, what happens for private inheritance and for public inheritance. So you have a base class in a base class as already seen there can be private members can be there can be protected members and there can be public members. Now what what will be the visibility in the derived class that is what we are going to fill in here. 
So, as already stated, this private members and private uh, members as well, whether they are data members or member functions, whatever be the visibility here stated here cannot be inherited. So, the private part cannot be inherited, that is the first thing, first row. And then, what about the protected data? Protected data, what actually is defined as protected data can be inherited, can be inherited by the immediate derived class. So, here uh, how you are going to inherit is mentioned here. So, this protected data of the base class, then that you are going to inherit in a private manner. So, naturally what happens is, is protected data of the base class will come in the private section of the derived class. So, here in the derived class this protected data, since you have taken in a private manner that goes to the private section. Then what about this protected data? Again the protected data can be inherited. This protected data can be inherited in a public manner also. If you are going to inherit the protected data in a public manner, it goes to the protected section. It goes to the protected section of the derived class. And what about this public data in the base class? Public data can be derived and this public data you can inherit either in a private manner or it can in inherit in a public manner. If you are inheriting the public, da public data members and member functions in a private manner, naturally that goes to the private section of the derived class. And the last one, it is very clear, all the data members and the member functions of the public uh, in the public section of the base class, you are inheriting that in a public manner also, naturally that will go to the public section of the derived class. So, that is the, uh, that is the uh, table, uh, I will make it more clear, say a base class visibility can be have, can be three values, can be, can be either private or can be protected or it can be public. Private data and member functions cannot be inherited. So, no matter whatever, whatever be the uh, in a mode of inheritance, whether it is private or public, this private data and member functions cannot be inherited. So, that is ruled out. The protected data can be inherited by the immediate derived class. What happens if, if you are inheriting that in a private manner? If you are inheriting that in a private manner, it goes to the private section. And if you are inheriting the protected data in a public manner, that goes to the protected section of the derived class. And what about this public data? This public data is there in the base class and you are inheriting in a private manner to the derived class. So, naturally that goes to the private section of the derived class. And also this public data in the base class, you are inheriting that also in a public way and that goes to the public section of the derived class. So, this is how the visibility of the inherited members looks like if you are uh, having this private uh, mode of inheritance and public mode of inheritance. So, uh, it is clearly mentioned or uh, in this pictorial representation uh, also, you have a class B and uh, you have two uh, base classes from B, D1 and D2 and in this class B you have private data, protected data and public data and it is mentioned private data it is not inheritable, but protected data can be inherited. How you are inheriting this protected data in D1, you are going to inherit that in a public manner. So, that goes to the pr uh, protected section of the class D1. And uh, what about the protected data inherited by D2? It is inherited in a private manner. Since you are inheriting in a private manner, that goes to the private section of D2. And uh, what happens to the public data? Public data is inherited in a public manner in the first case in D1. So, that goes to the uh, public section. And public data is inherited in a private manner in D2. So, that goes to the private section. And the last uh, uh, class, that is class X. In class X also it is clearly mentioned, everything is taken in a public manner. So, here the private things cannot be inherited, private things of D1 and D2 cannot be inherited, the protective ones can be inherited, but you are inheriting in a public manner, so that naturally goes to the public section. So, the uh, pub, uh, protected data that is uh, there in the uh, class D1, you are inheriting in a public manner, so that goes to the protected section and again in class D2 also the protected data. Uh, since you are inheriting in a public manner that goes to the protected section. Again the last uh, sections are public data of the uh, two classes D1 and D2, they are taking as public, so that goes to naturally to the public section of the class X. So, this is uh, the again the same table that is illustrated with the uh, help of a diagram. So, to, uh, so, these are the basic concepts of single inheritance. And in today's class we have just uh, seen, introduced what is inheritance, uh, the uh, different types of inheritance and the different visibility modes. So, uh, to summarize, uh, 
uh, we have seen what is uh, inheritance. So, by definition, in inheritance is it is a mechanism of deriving a new class from an already existing class. And based on the number of base classes and derived classes, we have seen four, five different types of inheritance. And in detail, we have seen just a single inheritance alone, where you have a single base class and a single derived class. And we have also seen the different visibility modes. What is uh, private visibility? What is meant by protected visibility? And what is public visibility? And what happens uh, if you are inheriting uh, the private data, protected data, and the public data? As already stated, private data cannot be inherited. Protected data can be inherited. Uh, to the immediate derived class and public data can be accessed from any class or from any function. So, we have seen the different visibility modes and also the different just mentioned the different types of inheritance and also what is private derivation and public derivation as far as single inheritance is concerned. So, these are the basics of uh, inheritance and uh, also in detail what is single inheritance and with these uh, knowledge or with these basic concepts we can move on to the other types of inheritance in the coming sessions. Thank you.